Not gonna lie to y'all, I am furious. So we just had the very first detailed, over-the-top smear campaign article waged against Marianne Williamson. And um, it is, we're going to get into all of it. We're going to dive into all of it. I'm going to break it down for you. Um, but suffice to say, and this is the most important point that everybody needs to understand, the, the people who wrote this article for Politico, more on Politico a little later, because boy, oh boy, do they have a record that they would like to hide, okay? But they went into this going, how do we take down, down Marianne Williamson? How do we smear Marianne Williamson? How do we destroy Marianne Williamson's reputation? How do we like snuff out this baby of her campaign in the crib? That was the intention going into it. Now, remember, they pretend like, oh, pff, us, bro, we're just like neutral and objective fact finders. We're like the serious media people. So we like we go into everything with an open mind and then sort of let the stories write themselves because we're really neutral and, and objective and whatnot. Nothing could be further from the truth. They had it out for her from the very beginning. The person who wrote this article was fishing around saying, how do I destroy Marianne Williamson and her campaign? Okay, so here's the article. Let me throw up uh, on screen for you. Uh, this is, again, in Politico, Marianne Williamson's abusive treatment of 2020 campaign staff revealed the self-help guru who is running for president again was emotionally and verbally abusive to staff, according to interviews with former employees. So, uh... I'll get into the specific points they make in a second, but understand something, guys. Politics 101 is take your opponent's strength and turn them into, turn it into their weakness. That's politics 101. So with Marianne Williamson, what do we know for sure? What do we know as a rock solid fact? In the 1980s, when everybody was running away from HIV and AIDS patients at 100 miles an hour, Marianne Williamson was holding their hands and giving them their medicine as they died and giving them love and affection as they died. So take the biggest upside of Marianne Williamson, her kindness, her sympathy, her empathy, and turn it into a weakness and go, actually, you guys might not know this, she's the worst person in the world to have ever lived ever. Wow. Now, the other portion of this is they're going to try to do what's called divide and conquer. So take the people who are more likely to support Marianne Williamson at this moment, which is like the left wing base, and try to put a wedge in between them and get a lot of the people who are already loyal supporters to go, well, I don't know. Now I need to reevaluate. So again, you take their strength and you try to turn it into a weakness. And that's what we're, we're looking at right now. So here's the arguments uh, that they make. They say she preaches love and kindness, but in reality, she's mean. And uh, she yelled at staffers. And one time she got so upset that she hit a car door and injured her own hand. And uh, they have an anonymous staffer who said, oh, she threw a phone at them. But of course, Marion Williamson comes out and categorically denies it and says that never happened. And uh, it is it's libelous and it is slanderous and it's totally untrue. They also um, here's another one of the criticisms in there. She's uh, really indecisive. So she would have an event that was on the schedule. She'd be getting ready for that event and then she'd cancel that event and then she'd put that event back on and that would anger her staff. And she would like yell in the process of doing these things. Then they go on to say, again, I, this, it's amazing to me. It's a politics 101. Take the strength, turn it into the weakness. They say, oh, she's actually so rude that she mocks people's appearances and she goes after them for their weight. So she like, she fat shames people. These are arguments that are tailor made to try to get like a left wing base to abandon her when, of course, the left wing base is like the only group in the country right now that's already sort of solid supporters. Turn your strength into your weakness. That's what they're trying to do here. It is crystal clear. Yet again, this is something that she categorically denies. The only thing in the article that she doesn't deny is where, when she hurt her hand because she was so mad. She hit a car door. She hurt her own hand. Now, notice something. This isn't about, oh my God, she was physically violent with any of her staffers, physically violent with any other person. No, the, the strongest claim they make against her vis-a-vis -vis other people is she yells and she's mean and she's not the, kind, the kindest to her own staffers, which again, she categorically denies. Now, by the way, there's all this anonymous. There's one person in the article that they actually like give the identity. You ready for this? I hope you're sitting down. 
It's uh, her former Iowa State director, who, by the way, used to work for Bernie's campaign, comes out and he verifies it. He's like, yeah, she's mean. She's terrible to her own people. Uh, you know, it's, it's inexcusable. I, you know, I'd never allow something like that. The same dude, in this article, they even admit it. Why was he let go from Bernie Sanders' campaign? Because he allegedly forcibly kissed somebody who worked underneath him. So the one person that you actually cite in the article is a dude who himself, according to your own admission, has a little bit of a sketchy history. But you're supposed to take his word like, oh my God, this is, you know, this is golden. So um, another thing they say is she allegedly floated monitoring staffers' phone, but she never, phones, but she never did it. Now, one of the passages that they have in here uh, is kind of amazing because it undermines the rest of their arguments. They say, quote, still, her behavior came as a shock to most of her 2020 campaign staff, the majority of whom had backgrounds working in politics and only knew of Williamson through her best-selling books and public speaking events, encouraging people to harness the power of love and learn to forgive. So let me decode that for you. We reached out to like 100 people to try to get them to shit on Marianne Williamson and tank Marianne Williamson's campaign. We were only able to find a few people who would do it. And we're going to slyly acknowledge that by saying, hey, most of the people actually liked her and they were really shocked to hear these allegations. So we're going to put a passage about that as the rest of the article is just totally, absolutely dragging her reputation through the, through the mud and smearing her relentlessly. So it, now you want to hear another example. Here's how you know they're full of shit and they have an agenda and they went into this to try to take her down. They describe her anger. This is a direct quote from the article. They describe her anger as, quote, it would be foaming, spitting, uncontrollable rage. Foaming? Her anger was foaming. She would be foaming, foaming at the mouth. So like, like a cartoon wolf or something? You, you have to make it sound more realistic if you're going to go for these gutter smear campaigns. You, ha you can't go that over the top because then everybody knows you're full of shit. Okay, now let's take a minute and talk about Politico. Politico is the hack of all hack outlets. It is the epitome of the swamp. So the guy who uh, bought it recently and owns it, uh, Matthias Dopfner, he's the new Politico owner. Uh, now he said when he bought it, who, me, bro? I'm like nonpartisan. I'm like apolitical. I'm sort of a centrist. I'm above the fray. And then Washington Post uncovered his emails where he said, and I quote, pray for Trump to become president again in 2020. Quote, no American administration in 50 years has done more than Trump. This is the outlet that want, wants you to think they're credible. This is the outlet. By the way, another story that uh, I've covered in the past about Politico from about a year or so ago. Apparently, they demand loyalty to, quote, capitalism and Israel from all employees. This is on the record. This was reported. Politico demands loyalty to capitalism and Israel. But they are serious, and they're just giving people facts and information. And there, there wasn't an agenda with this, this rank attempt to smear Marianne Williamson. So, guys, I'm going to make this as simple as possible for everybody. My experience with Justice Democrats uh, actually lends me a lot of credibility to talk about an issue like we're witnessing right now, okay? When I was with Justice Democrats, they tried, they used the same playbook against us when we had just gotten off the ground. So myself and Jank were, you know, we were co-founders of it, we're at the top of it with a couple other people, and you had some right-wing outlet dig up Jank's old blogs from back when he was a conservative in the 1990s. And in those blogs, he said things that were cringy. And one of the things he did, and this is ironic, he was taking a shot at himself by writing this line, but he said something along the lines of, the genes of women are obviously flawed because they don't want to, they don't want to breed with me as much as they should. It was like a self-deprecating, like, well, obviously women are flawed because they don't want me, right? And people, they took that, put the quote on paper, ran the articles along with other cringe quotes from Jenk. And it was like a nuclear bomb went off. And there was a mutiny from the Justice Democrat staff where they said, look, either he goes or we all go. 
And Jank put his ego aside and he said, okay, you know what? If that's the choice, you guys are on the ground. You guys are doing all the important work vis-a-vis the candidates and the campaigns. You know, this is, this is my baby, this, this thing here, but if I got to let it go for the better of the movement, I will do it. And he stepped aside. But the attempt, and it was right-wing outlets that dug up these blog posts, it was a divide-and-conquer attempt that worked. And of course, the, the staffers fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Uh, uh, uh. They fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Because it appealed to the things that they say they care about. Oh, you guys say you're, you know, you hate sexism? Well, what if I told you the guy at the head of this organization is the biggest sexist in the world? And again, uh, oh, just got him, right? And so we're seeing the same thing going on here. Take her strength, that she's a phenomenally kind and empathetic person, and turn it into a weakness. Say, actually, she's not that. I don't care that she held the hands of AIDS patients as they died in the 1980s and, and gave them their medicine. I don't care that she was the only one there for them. She yelled. She yelled her staffers and stuff. By the way, if you really want to have this conversation about serious issues with candidates, are you aware that Donald Trump is accused of rape and sexual assault from, over, from dozens of women? Are you aware that Joe Biden was accused of rape? Are you aware that Joe Biden voted for the Iraq war, which led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians? Are you aware that Donald Trump attacked a top Iranian commander, nearly sparking World War III, when that commander was in the field fighting ISIS? Are we really having a conversation about whether or not she yelled? There was that video that went viral of Joe Biden where he was like, he called somebody at a, at a town hall of his like, all right, fat, you want to fight me? He called him like fat or fats, and then he wanted to fight him. You could easily take that moment, put it in quotes, and then spin it as like, oh, this man is so impolite and rude, and he's got anger problems. But they don't do that because they like the establishment politicians. They agree with the establishment politicians. It's Marianne Williamson, who's an outsider, who they're trying to paint as crazy and somebody you should never support. Well, guess what? Even if every single thing in this article was true, which it's not, she's the only one in the race who wants Medicare for all and free college and a living wage and ending the wars. And we can go on and on. Getting money out of politics, so ending the corruption. She's the only one that wants to address the real issues. So even if your little shitty smear piece was accurate, which it's not, I would still sit here and say, don't care. Don't care. Sometimes I want somebody who does get loud and aggressive to deal with the military industrial complex, which by the way, that brings me to my final point. And this is probably the most important point. I lied, I have two more points, but this is probably the most important point. Responsible statecraft is a phenomenal outlet. They do a lot of reporting on you know, foreign policy, but also money and politics and things of that nature. Well, they reported here, this is from November 16th, 2022. Let me read this to you. Politico's national security and foreign policy coverage took some heat late last year for being sponsored in part by the defense industry and the Beltway media outlet leaned into its relationship with weapons makers this week by prominently featuring industry leaders at its 2022 defense summit in Washington. Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and another, and another less well-known firm, Improbable U.S. Defense and National Security, sponsored the summit, but their company's names were not just displayed prominently at the summit and on its website, as is somewhat unusual, or excuse me, usual for this kind of event, Politico also gave a representative from each company a prominent role in the summit by participating in what, is, what it dubbed executive conversations. Except the three panels were less conversational and more of an infomercial, as, these, as the Politico interviewer in each appeared to rattle off a series of scripted questions that let the companies explain why their products are necessary for the defense of the United States. It was essentially similar to sponsored content one might see on some mainstream news websites. Let me put that in layman's terms for you. Politico is an outlet that will report on foreign policy, and right underneath the title, it says, sponsored by Lockheed Martin, sponsored by Raytheon. They have run articles saying, hey, here's why we should attack Syria. Here's why we should do war with country X or country Y. And by the way, this is paid for by Lockheed Martin or by Raytheon. And we're supposed to take you seriously? We're supposed to take you seriously. When you are, there are no words to 
adequately and accurately describe how loathsome you are. You are everything wrong with journalism. You're not journalism. You are a paid mouthpiece for the military industrial complex. And by the way, paid mouthpiece for the oil industry because they have donors from them as well. From Big Pharma because they have donors from them as well. You're taking money from all of these gigantic industries, these massively profitable industries, and then you're doing sycophantic coverage of those industries when those corporations and those billionaires are the problem in society. If you're not reporting critically on them, that says a hell of a lot about you now, doesn't it? But no, you save all the vitriolic bullshit for an outsider like Marianne Williamson. Oh, she was mean to her staff. <laughs> pathetic. You guys are pathetic. Final point. Um, another thing that uh, Politico did. Now, uh, Andrew Yang ran not too long ago for mayor of New York City, and he was leading for a while. And now, look, I'm no fan of Andrew Yang. You know, his politics have evolved over the years in a way that's significantly worse than where he was originally. We don't need to get into that. But the bottom line is they had an article about Andrew Yang titled, Yang under fire after laughing at question about choking women. Now, let me explain to you what happened here and explain to you how Politico covered it. Somebody uh, asked Andrew Yang at an event um, if he, quote, choked bitches. And then he goes on to say, he asked, quote, while he's fucking bitches, can he keep his Tims on? Andrew Yang awkwardly responded, I, I, th I think it's purely up to your partner. And then when he heard this guy ask the choke bitches question, he kind of nervously laughed and swatted him away. It was like, hey, Andrew Yang, do you choke bitches? He's like, <laughs> and, and next. That was his reaction. Politico wrote a hit piece on this, going after Andrew Yang for how he responded to that question. And they go on to say, um, but Yang's engagement with the question after he used the word bitches and his laughter at the suggestion of violence against women drew comparisons from rival campaigns and critics to former President Donald Trump and Governor Andrew Cuomo, who is facing a litany of sexual harassment accusations from former and current staffers. They smeared Andrew Yang for awkwardly laughing and hand-waving away a troll question about, quote, choking bitches. This is who Politico is. They will blatantly and brazenly lie right in front of your eyes and then call you crazy if you question it. They're nothing but at a hack establishment rag, and they're doing the dirty work and the bidding of the establishment. That's what they are. So this should be a rallying cry, if anything. The best you could come up with after doing all this digging with the intent to take down Marianne Williamson is she, she raised her voice and she hurt her own hand one day. Ooh, ooh, that's so scary, bro. That comes nowhere near the plethora of politicians in office right now accused of sexual assault, sexual harassment, and endless war crimes. Never mind the endless corruption. OK, but Politico has nothing to say about any of that because they themselves are the biggest uh, recipient of corporate money and billionaire money. And they're the biggest player in this game of corruption. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.